there you go. All right, so um, it's a pleasure to be here. Last time uh, I've been here was six years ago before the canteen opened up here. So this was a big improvement. I'm uh, very happy to give these lectures, even though I didn't work much on flavor in the recent uh, years, I should say, well, some, some flavor aspects, uh, but uh, uh, Simon and the rest of the organizing committee thought of me as, uh, as a speaker for, for the flavor. Uh, so we'll have uh, three lectures starting from uh, uh, standard model flavor aspects, and then, of course, uh, it's a big topic, and uh, I'm going to cover something that uh, uh, everyone uh, probably have seen uh, um, um, in your graduate courses, uh, but then or I would probably cover some aspects that you might not have seen, um, such as electric dipole moments. Um, then uh, lecture number two will be sensitivity to new physics from short distance physics, sort of, let's say there is new physics at a TV or 10 TV and so on. What's, what does it imply for flavor and vice versa? And then uh, tomorrow we're going to discuss more like um, uh, flavor physics in the presence of light particles such as axions, dark photons, uh, dark Higgs, etc., and dark sector in general. So for lecture number one, we uh, do the review of the standard model and we go over the uh, CKM uh, paradigm and uh, CP violation. We'll discuss recent experimental developments uh, such as uh, 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 measurement of several weak penguin processes. It's a strange name, but Nevertheless, I will uh, discuss also the origin of neutrino masses. Here, we kind of would say that neutrinos are, um, uh, what you can th think of it uh, as, uh, as sort of a high dimensional extension of the STAIR model, the, the neutrino masses, or uh, as, uh, as a result of sort of uh, genuine B BSM physics. Um, and uh, we'll mention some of the sp uh, suppression of lepton flavor violation in the minimal model. And then we'll get, get to the um, flavor diagonal CP violation and uh, suppression of EDMs uh, due to the standard model CP violating phase. So here is a slide on the standard model. Um, uh, this is the Lagrangian of the standard model. So, uh, it's very simple stuff in the sense uh, that uh, it includes uh, one Higgs boson, uh, three types of different gauge fields consistent with SU2, U1, uh, SU3, and uh, meta fields that include the three generations of uh, quarks and leptons. Now, um, the uh, things that you need to remember, of course, uh, for these lectures is how to count the dimensionality of operators, and I mean mass dimension here. So uh, remind everyone that uh, uh, dimension of uh, bosonic fields in uh, four, four dimensions, and we work in three plus one, is one, and dimension of uh, uh, fermions is three half. So all terms in the Lagrangian that are included are fully Lorentz scalars, so they don't transform under the Poincaré uh, uh, transformations. They also respect gauge symmetries, that is, that uh, we, we apply gauge transformation to all three fields, nothing changes, okay? Um, that's, uh, that's important, and uh, all terms in the standard model are basically dimension four, except for one singular term that is uh, dimension two, and that is the, the Higgs mass here. Um, and it comes uh, with this uh, conspicuous, uh, I guess I should, uh, since I'm writing the Lagrangian, put a plus sign, and that, uh, that, that will uh, break the symmetry and uh, the, uh, the Higgs will develop a valve. All right, so, um, uh, the standard model Higgs is a crucial component here, and it's a unique uh, field in the standard model as it gives all particle masses, uh, including W, Z, and the fermions. 
Now we'd like to extend this uh, um, content to include new physics. So new physics can come in uh, heavy and light variety. Okay, so this, uh, when we have a, uh, so let's think to, uh, for, for today's lecture of some uh, benchmark energies uh, consistent with the masses of uh, B mesons and K mesons, because that's where m much of the uh, flavor, flavor kind of action uh, is happening. So compared to uh, that scale of uh, half a GV or uh, 5 GV, all the rest that is ex existing perhaps at the weak scale and above, that's a heavy scale. So we, from that point of view, we can integrate it out and it will come up, uh, come up in the form of the high dimensional operators. If indeed these uh, scales are higher than the standard model scales, then it's likely to, that these high dimensional operators would also be uh, symmetric under the standard model gauge transformations. And we can include uh, things uh, um, in this um, Wilsonian approach according to dimensions because the high dimensions will be punished by the higher uh, energy scale in the denominator. And we start from dimension five where we can find uh, effective operators that will be responsible for the neutrino masses. And then we continue with dimension six, where much of the flavor action will take place. And then uh, we'll uh, also have, uh, in principle, higher dimensional operators. Uh, these days, uh, this is uh, all uh, uh, being investigated a lot, because guess what? The LHC hasn't found any like real resonance that, that uh, shine in our face. So this uh, we'll discuss about some models uh, along these lines in lecture two. However, it is quite possible that uh, the STAIR model is also talking to some uh, uh, particles that are as light as the STAIR model particles or lighter. The example is the axion, for example, that is uh, uh, having a mass uh, if we take a QCD axion, perhaps it's uh, uh, from uh, uh, sub uh, micro micro electron volts to milli electron volts. That's the preferred range. In that case, uh, we cannot just really integrate it out. We have to leave it in as an actual degree of freedom. And axion can be produced in the standard model processes. But uh, thinking about it uh, more generically, we can introduce uh, the entire dark sector. Um, that could be very light and uh, could uh, talk to the STAIR model via the, the set of uh, effective operators. We will again use the Wilsonian approach to uh, try to organize these operators and they, they sometimes have a, a name of uh, portals. And then there can be uh, obviously a very complicated life within the dark sector with, uh, with, the, with various uh, gauge interactions, uh, um, uh, this school I already heard several times dark showers. So maybe maybe there is a dark shower waiting for us, and then uh, this will be a content of lecture three. All right. Any questions so far? All right. So let's um, start with the standard model. The uh, uh, key insight uh, here was due to the uh, Steven Weinberg. Uh, there's many things in our field from 1967 and uh, in the uh, seminal paper, uh, Theory of Leptons. And uh, the, the, the idea was that you can use uh, a Higgs doublet field, that is uh, four real degrees of freedom, uh, a, a field fundamental uh, charged, uh, fundamentally charged under SU2. So you can think of it as a spinner of the SU2 field, uh, a spinner in the weak space. And it also has a, a charge of plus two. So Weinberg's insight was that uh, if we arrange this Higgs to develop a, a vacuum expectation value, not only would the uh, gauge uh, uh, bosons uh, have a mass, but one can also choose their correct charge assignments uh, for uh, uh, quarks. And well, it was mostly for leptons uh, that will uh, make uh, a total singlets out of uh, th uh, three fields, left, uh, right-handed fermions and the Higgs. And the most important aspect of the standard model for our lectures will be 
that the left-handed fields and the right-handed fields fundamentally have different charges, right? So if you multiply the left-handed field by right-handed field, psi left uh, bar by psi right, inside the QED theory you get in this uh, fully uh, uh, U1 invariant scalar uh, that you can multiply by any arbitrary mass parameter. Inside the stair model, this is not possible. We take a uh, uh, QL, uh, QL bar DR uh, uh, combination and we multiply it by H. That makes it a full uh, scalar. And if you look at the, the charge assignments here, uh, this uh, uh, basically the SU, uh, uh, SU2 indices uh, are contracted while um, delta of beta. So um, this is like a, um, a row is uh, contracted with the column. And they, if you look at the charge assignments here, so for Q bar, we have to use minus one six because it's bar, so it's a co complex conjugate. For D, we use uh, 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 minus one third. Together, it gives minus one half. We multiply it by the Higgs that has a uh, plus one half charge. So together it's zero. Okay. So uh, the same thing is here the, for the for the SU two uh, indices uh, uh, for the uh, for the uh, uh, sorry I have a bug here. This got to be a left one. Otherwise, I'll break all possible symmetries of the stern model. Right. <laughs> Okay, so this is a lepton, and then over here, obviously, I have uh, uh, multiplied the right-handed uh, fermion field uh, by the left-handed bar. This has uh, an index alpha, this has an index beta, and we have to sum it with anti-symmetric tensor alpha beta. That makes it as U2 singlet. We'll return to that at some point. So um, having learn how to construct the SU2 uh, cross U1 symmetric uh, things, we can uh, uh, also multiply this by uh, 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 Yukawa three by three matrices, and we will have uh, YU, YD, and uh, YL matrices. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, this is the uh, let's uh, let's write QL. Uh, say it has uh, UL and DL. So this is uh, this uh, I would call it uh, QL one, and this would be uh, QL two. So uh, SU two indices. This one we contracted because they, they belong to the same same representation, so you have to contract it with epsilon, yes. The one with delta? The, the, the one with the delta, you can see a bar here, so, uh, and there is no bar here, right? And here, here there is a bar, and here is a star. So this, uh, so that's the trait, okay? So uh, it, this, uh, this uh, we'll, 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 uh, we'll uh, return to this when we talk about the Majorana masses a little bit because it's uh, very, very similar to, uh, um, anyways. Um, let's uh, let's uh, uh, gain some perspective uh, from what we just learned how to construct uh, the the uh, the uh, 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 the singlet uh, singlet that we can add into the Lagrangian first thing we learn is that uh, uh, the masses of uh, all particles are limited to electroweak scale and below like I said if we have a uh, say, fundamental theory of QED valid to arbitrary high scales, we can form a dimension uh, three operator that is invariant under all symmetries, uh, which is U1 symmetry here. And there is no information about this mass of the electron. It can be a T, uh, let's say, a fermion. It can be a TV or... Uh, 10 TV or 10 to the 16 GV and what not. And this uh, is sometimes uh, called uh, perhaps not uh, very appropriately as uh, vector-like fermions, okay? 
or at least that's confusing at least for me okay but that's 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 the the uh, the masses in uh, uh, the, the vector like theories in the uh, standard model we cannot have uh, um, say a hundred uh, TV fermion why For that, we need to remember the scale of the breaking of this standard model, which is 246 uh, GeV. And if we uh, want to have a 10 GeV mass, then we will have to multiply it by the Yukawa coupling that will be 10 to the 3. We'll lose all the predictive power that we have in the standard model because it would correspond to highly, highly strongly interacting theory. Okay. Very good. Now, what's, uh, what's another uh, uh, important feature here is the conspicuous absence of right-handed neutrinos. Neutrinos remain massless at uh, dimension 4 level because there is no corresponding field of uh, NR. Okay? So this uh, was by construction in Weinberg uh, time. There was absolutely no reason to introduce NR because... Uh, Guess what? If you want to explain why the neutrino mass are massless, you would say, okay, something has happened to NR. It either doesn't exist or it's infinitely heavy. Uh, it can be infinitely heavy because we can uh, make uh, it a Majorana mass and decouple from the spectrum. The important thing here, of course, that uh, underlined here is a full singlet dimension five, uh, sorry, dimension. Uh, uh, five half composite operator, okay, L times H, with uh, uh, the SU two indices indeed contracted wire epsilon. So uh, we'll return to the neutrino masses uh, as we go. So uh, the theory enjoys a very very uh, profound uh, parameterization invariance that is. In principle, we have uh, supplied ourselves with the uh, three matrices, three by three, that have that can be populated with complex numbers. So if I made the multiplication right, three times three times three times two is 54. I think so. And so, the, uh, the, in fact, uh, uh, the, because of the remaining reparameterization invariance, we only have nine masses as eigenvalues uh, of these matrices and four mixing angles. Okay, so that's uh, much, of, much of these parameters are simply not physical inside the standard model. In particular, the, the right-handed rotations of the right-handed fields are not observable. Uh, because there is no probe inside the standard model that uh, that uh, connects, uh, say, right-handed and uh, uh, up and down quarks. Um, very good. So um, this is uh, from uh, uh, PDG review. I just copied a few things. So this is exactly what we were talking about uh, here. Of course, uh, the the same scalar is called phi rather than H, so you for, forgive me for that. This is a, 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 a thing that I cannot uh, get, get rid of. Uh, so uh, I either call it capital H or phi intermittently, so you have to bear with me. So the, the most important uh, feature here is that uh, matrices YD and YU are not diagonalizable at the same time. And the left-handed rotation, so basically uh, QL, uh, would uh, have to uh, transform differently. UL and DL are rotated by uh, uh, their own uh, kind of uh, rotation matrices, and the the uh, they are not the same. The, meaning that they they separately they are unitary, but their product uh, these are two different matrices. Their product is equal to the CKM matrix. This is a standard parameterization of the CKM matrix. It's not unique. You can uh, reparameterize it using the remaining degrees of freedom and move around, in particular, the CP violating phase uh, from place to place. However, of course, physics would have to be invariant under all these uh, combinations. And in particular, CP violation exists only for three generations or more. We have three generations and uh, would have to involve uh, uh, the uh, kind of revisiting all three generations in uh, in uh, 
uh, uh, reparameterization invariant way. All right, so all the measure, all the uh, entries in the, in the um, uh, uh, that matrix are measured. And uh, uh, when I started physics, uh, there were still debates as whether the, the CPM is the right framework for the for the existing uh, CP violation in chaos or not. This uh, issue was absolutely fully settled in the late 90s with the discovery of epsilon prime over epsilon in the KK decays and the B factor is uh, conclusively measuring CP violation in the chaos sector. Um, all right. So uh, the, uh, unlike the neutrino mass mixing that we uh, ma uh, mixing matrix that we we um, I'm stepping ahead, uh, uh, the the CKM matrix is close to one 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 one. So all diagonal entries are smaller. Uh, um, very well. So what what are the the main con uh, phenomenological consequences of this uh, uh, framework? Uh, the most uh, one of the most important things is that the uh, flavor changing is uh, relegated to what's called the charge currents, the interactions of the W. If you take uh, the photon, uh, uh, the Higgs, and the Z, it does not have any kind of uh, uh, flavor changing at the tree level. So it does not connect D quark to an S quark with the Higgs at the tree level. If you go to the loop level, that is possible, okay? So this is a, a, a consequence of the minimal Higgs choice. You add more and more Higgses, as we're going to discuss on the lecture number two, you get more flavor violation. Um, What's other important uh, properties? Uh, the, the coupling of the STEM model to the physical Higgs is one to one related to particle mass. Remember the particle mass uh, is uh, proportional to the Yukawa coupling of a fermion times the Higgs web. And now to include the Higgs boson, all what we need to do is to multiply by the bracket where H is the actual physical Higgs weighted by 246 GV. So you can then, uh, 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 sorry, this is, uh, let's let's do it this way. So psi bar psi uh, times MF is transformed to this, uh, uh, psi bar psi, or we can write it as M psi one plus h over v times psi by psi. So the, the, from here we learn that the Higgs couplings are proportional to the mass for all particles really. And uh, this uh, impressive plot, although it's been improved already from the time I copied it from the internet, shows that indeed uh, what you extract from experiment consists with expectation that all the couplings are proportional to particles masses. Um, and I believe the error bars for the muon has uh, since has shrunk. Okay. All right, and so we have uh, three mixing angles as we mentioned in one CPU violating phase. And it's also a consequence of uh, uh, three generations and the minimal Higgs. If we have uh, more Higgs, we will have more uh, uh, room for CP violating phases and more obviously uh, mixing angles in general. All right, so uh, the flavor physics is a big enterprise that uh, is uh, uh, trying to put together uh, the uh, measurements of the uh, of the uh, various angles and uh, since we can have an over complete set of measurements we can test the framework uh, for self consistency um, one of the uh, uh, things that we can check is the uh, unitarity of the CKM matrix so if you have a unitary matrix and you take any row and consider it as a vector and you take a different row uh, uh, and complex conjugate that, and you multiply, make, make a scalar product of two vectors together, you get a zero, right? Uh, and if uh, you, you multiply it by itself, you get one. So this is uh, a, a consequence of uh, 
uh, uh, matrix times uh, matrix uh, dagger equals to uh, a unity matrix. So if we uh, think of it, uh, uh, one of these relations and factor out here uh, uh, what's uh, being uh, co commonly factored out, we get this relation. It looks like one relation, but in fact it's two because these are complex numbers. So if you think about it, uh, then uh, the uh, uh, some of this, uh, so this is the the zero to one kind of uh, 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 vector here, uh, because it has no uh, no no imaginary part and the real part. And this uh, uh, adding these two things uh, should should uh, make a full a full triangle and uh, land in the same in the same spot. If there would be no CP violation, all ev everything will be squashed to a line, and we would. Uh, uh, measure if they if the distances match up. Uh, so this is uh, the we, uh, if you look at this plot, what is the the oldest uh, measurement here? It's actually the that has the largest area here. Right, this is uh, um, right here is. Uh, from 1964, kind of resulting from the 1964 measurement of uh, of the K and mixing and K K long decay to two primes. Uh, why why is it from 1964 till now we have not improved this uh, to the point of the razor sharp uh, line? Because we can measure this epsilon sub K parameter with uh, sort of 10 minus three precision. Who can tell me? Well, this uh, this um, uh, plot is done in the following way: you take your measurement and you do the best thing with it possible to extract the the the, the most uh, reliable error bars. But here, in terms of interpreting epsilon sub k, suddenly we have so much freedom. Right? Why is that? <laughs> Yeah, we can. We measure very precisely. Look at the measurement of epsilon sub k parameter in the particle the data group book. Yes. No, we, we 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 measure it very precisely, right? We super precisely. However, in this plot, it has large error bars. Why is that? There you go. That's a correct answer. So to connect this to fundamental physics, we need to go through a matrix element that involves quarks uh, that uh, that leave uh, inside the hadrons. That uh, brings uh, a degree of uncertainty that unless we can muster the the uh, uh, the uh, non-perturbative aspects of the QCD, we are also always going to be uh, sort of stuck with some uh, some degree of uncertainty, especially uh, in this in this measurement of epsilon sub k. With the B physics, it is a little better because the the QCD theory is under better control. All right. So you've just uh, this uh, figure that uh, so that we uh, notice that everything uh, intercepts at, at this at this uh, small area here. So if you don't uh, think that this is a big uh, progress, you can uh, go back into uh, back in time and see how these things were intersecting. I know for you it sounds like prehistory, two thousand six. For me, it's like well, not not that long ago. And uh, if you go to to nineteen nineties, there would be a, like a complete freedom here, right? To to almost almost complete freedom to put to put uh, put things uh, um, uh, in a rather wi uh, wide area over here. So that's uh, that's um, just the success of this uh, framework, and let's uh, say a few words about how these things are measured. Yes. Right. 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 Epsilon. Uh, so. Uh, um, Basically, um, 
there is a K0 and K0 bar particles that are degenerate. Um, if um, they don't have any specific CP symmetry, they transform into each other under the CP. Using uh, them, you can uh, uh, have uh, K1 and K2 particles that are uh, basically K0 uh, plus uh, K0 bar over root two and K2 is I K0 bar minus K0 bar over root two, okay? So these are two real fields uh, that have a very well specified CP properties in particular K2 uh, has uh, a CP minus one. Uh, so the normal decay of K2 would be a decay of uh, uh, three pions, for example, or maybe some leptonic, uh, semi-leptonic decays. However, in 1964, uh, people have discovered that uh, uh, K2, would be K2, decays uh, into uh, two pions, signifying the breakdown of, uh, of uh, uh, CP symmetry. Epsilon sub K is the parameter that relates the physical K long meson with uh, uh, K2 plus uh, now, I, forgive me, I can be here, we don't remember exact phase notation, but it's epsilon uh, K, uh, K1 admixture, okay? So small admixture of uh, the uh, uh, CP even state into the uh, K long. All right, so um, more questions? Now we go over... Uh, very quickly, measurements of the CKM angles. Uh, one of the most precisely measured uh, angle is VUD. It's not surprising because uh, much of it, uh, of the it enters in every beta decay possible. And uh, the, the uh, sort of uh, the decay of choice is the spinless nucleus with a positive parity decaying to spinless nucleus in the, uh, with a positive parity. These have to be two nuclei together, right, sitting together in the, in the uh, uh, periodic table. That uh, is uh, re, uh, sort of uh, has no additional complication with the spin structure that has not uh, coming from uh, any uh, uh, profound uh, kind of uh, theory and. Uh, uh, there is a, a, a approximate conservation of charge vector current that allows you to treat this very precisely. Um, so um, the VUS is measured in semi-leptonic decays of uh, uh, chaos, and the point here is that K pi matrix element of the vector current can be almost devoid of the QCD uncertainties, and that allows you to, uh, to measure the uh, VUS parameter. If you can have the ratio of uh, f uh, uh, k over f pi from, uh, say, a lattice calculation, then you can also measure the ratio of VUS and VUD using the uh, lepton decays of the pions and the cans. Now, uh, VCS, VCD, obviously measured through the D meson decay that uh, contains the charm quark, again, from the semi leptonic and leptonic decays. Now, VCB can be measured from B decays to charm with uh, various uh, ways of uh, extracting the, uh, the, the results that are not uh, fully consistent with each other. Uh, we think that there, so the, the, there is some tension. Uh, VUB is measured from the B decays to light mesons. And uh, VTS and VTD, can we measure it at LHC? Well, uh, let's say at uh, May, two, uh, two biggest experiments at the LAC. If we, we produce, uh, uh, I don't know how many millions, probably in the billions of the TG bar pairs, right? Can we measure the, uh, the VTS uh, uh, through the decay of the top quark? What do you think? The top quark, if we produce a top quark, right, it uh, likes to decay to what? B, 
and the W, right? And uh, this is because VTB is uh, order one, right? Or the, almost one, right? And if, uh, if we want to uh, measure VTS on, for, on top of this, this would be a decay that uh, occurs uh, 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 v, uh, with VTS over VTB at a scale of uh, 0.04 squared. Okay, this, if we would have a instantaneous detection that this is a S quark, we would have uh, probably no problems uh, from the point of view of statistics. However, that is uh, very hard to tell the strange uh, jet from the B jet with that degree of, of accuracy. So uh, even though we have measured, uh, like, uh, like I say, uh, billions of uh, top quarks, we cannot uh, have an extraction of... Uh, anything other than VTB and also with, with some errors. However, this uh, uh, quirks enter into the box diagrams that, uh, uh, that, uh, and other radiative corrections that uh, determine the splitting of the neutral counts and uh, B mesons and that's where, B mesons specifically, and that's where, where this, uh, the, the, the information about VTS and VTB is coming from. And of course, the CPU violation, as we already discussed, comes from K long to two pi measurements, and more so while via the CPU violation uh, measurements in the B uh, B meson decays. So um, um, I wouldn't uh, make uh, a justice to this topic, but I just uh, cannot uh, avoid mentioning the beautiful physics that. Uh, uh, B factors are using for uh, uh, studying the um, the um, uh, properties of the B mesons. So the uh, the B factors uh, use very much quantum mechanics and the entangled states of the B mesons. Uh, they run at uh, upsilon 4s, which is a BB bar uh, 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 bound state of the B quarks. But if you open the PDG data group book and you look at the width of the upsilon uh, 1s, 2s, you would see like it's like 40 kV, 30 kV. You step up to upsilon 4s and you suddenly see that this is uh, 40 MeV or something like that. So it's much wider state because it can decay to two B mesons or B and uh, and I B. So there's a bound states of the heavy big quark and the light uh, uh, up or down quark. So this uh, uh, the B factor is run on it, and so the, the emerging two mesons are not uh, known which which one are they until they they perform a, a measurement of the tag decay. So this uh, this tag uh, de defines here uh, um, the uh, uh, t equals zero point, and then uh, for example, if it produces uh, mu plus and uh, d minus uh, mesons, you would say that okay, this is a, I guess it's a b b b meson that have decayed. And uh, if you apply this tag again uh, at the later uh, at the later point, and you would see that what. Okay. Uh, once once you know that uh, the tag, you know that the other. So then you would say that this is B zero. Then the other one is instantaneously determined as B zero bar, right? But then the time elapses, and that state can uh, can oscillate into back into B zero. If you then then you can study it by measuring the tag in the same uh, the same sign, for example. Now. Uh, the the key key uh, key design of this uh, was to measure the uh, decay of the uh, bees into uh, self conjugate states such as J psi K short, and uh, that is uh, allowing the interference. So this self conjugate state, both B zero and B zero bar can decay to it. So you have the interference of uh, uh, B zero bar uh, going into into uh, into this state or B0 bar uh, oscillating into B0 and going into this state. So this two, two paths has a relative phase between them. And guess what? This is a phase uh, directly related to the phase of the CKM matrix. So uh, when you uh, measure this, uh, um, basically here it's uh, delta T. Uh, 
uh, you would see that for different sign of the delta T and the different sign of the tag, whether this is B0 or B0 bar, this, uh, this, uh, the probability of uh, decaying into, into this uh, JSIK short uh, uh, final state has a skewness and the asymmetry of the skewness and is the CP violating asymmetry. What's interesting here is Bobar and Bella use uh, two different colors, red and, uh, and uh, blue for the B0 and B0 bar, but for whatever reason, it's, uh, the identification is, uh, is flipped. I don't know. You see? I cannot explain it. Anyways, uh, the trick here uh, and the, the, the big achievement here is actually that uh, uh, in the asymmetry, much of the QCD matrix elements actually cancel out. So what you get from that measurement is the direct information about the CPM angles. Okay. Then um, what else to say here? Um, the... Uh, 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 th this, this of course, has been uh, also very, very successfully implemented at, at uh, further uh, at LHC at, uh, at LHCb experiments, and we are, of course, also waiting for the Bell uh, two experiment to uh, achieve the design luminosity and uh, uh, enhance the sample of uh, B zero by a factor of fifty that uh, that uh, that they said uh, on the outset that they can achieve. So this, uh, this uh, in particular, this measurement, if we scroll back, gives one of the sharpest uh, 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 lines here, the, the measurement of uh, sine uh, sin, uh, beta, sine two beta, and also known as sine of two phi one. So the alpha, beta, gamma, and phi one, phi two, phi three are again. This is like lost in translation. The 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 the, the Japanese part of the nomenclature. So um, I didn't know about the colors though. Very well. So the the trick here was uh, was to get enough luminosity because the branching ratios for this uh, for the, the branching ratios for the tag decays are very large. The branching ratios for the uh, for the uh, uh, south conjugate uh, J psi K short decays are small. However, with the small branching ratios, the asymmetries here, if you look at them, are order one. So you much rather prefer small branching ratios and large asymmetries than uh, tiny asymmetries with large branching ratio, because that means that you have to measure super precisely to extract the, the asymmetries. Very well. So uh, the the standard theory of the uh, of the standard model uh, uh, does not have uh, k zero or s to d transitions at the tree level, as we mentioned, but uh, it develops it at the loop level. So if you look at the box diagram here with the two w exchanges, and uh, you look at uh, sort of uh, up and uh, Charm. Let's let's just take a simplified up uh, up and charm uh, intermediate state uh, uh, picture. You have uh, basically an upper part here of this diagram containing the sum over uh, up uh, up and uh, 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 charm propagators. And the the key point that this uh, uh, and this uh, uh, products are actually opposite. So we have. Uh, 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 two by two CKM matrix, you can uh, call it uh, cosine theta kabiba, uh, cosine theta kabiba, uh, sine theta kabiba, and minus sine theta kabiba. And so, the, because of that minus, the, the, these two things are opposite. So, you can actually factor out uh, VUD, uh, VUS, and uh, over here you will have the difference. Uh, between the the uh, uh, charm uh, and uh, up quark masses uh, and the double propagator. So if uh, this uh, difference is zero, you will get uh, zero result. If the charm quark would have to be non-existent or, which is hard to imagine from what we know now, 
or would be uh, very close to electroweak scale, then the size of this diagram would be vastly larger because the this uh, the the integral would actually here sits at uh, at, at the churn mass. So this uh, uh, the, the, the seeing this cancellation uh, prior to discovery of the charm quark has led people to believe that the charm is an existing particle, and this is all known as a, a glacial Leopoldus Miami mechanism. All right, so um, these are, these are uh, I hope that uh, one way or another you've seen this material through your courses. Uh, uh, now we'd like to talk a little bit more about the the recent experimental highlights. Uh, so there's uh, lots of uh, robust flavor physics uh, done at, uh, at various uh, experiments. So here I'm just going to uh, quote uh, several uh, uh, impressive results uh, from uh, 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 LHC, from uh, 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 K on beam experiment and uh, uh, the B factories. So the one of the key measurements at the LHC was the B sub S decay to mu mu. This is uh, uh, well predicted inside the standard model and the branching ratio agrees with the standard model relatively well over here. This is all seen by all three experiments. And um, the the diagrams leading to this are pictured here. Now, uh, this, uh, but prior to LHC, there was a uh, much of uh, hope that this this uh, this uh, uh, decay is, for example, enhanced in uh, in the supersymmetric models. And we'll, uh, next lecture, we'll discuss how that comes about. Now, uh, the K on beam experiment, also known as NA sixty two. Uh, at CERN has uh, 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 observed uh, k to pi plus missing energy. Of course, we should call it a new new bar, but this is our inference because we don't dis dis de detect these neutrinos as such. But uh, within the standard model, this is a new new bar for sure. Uh, this is their uh, 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 basically a key plot uh, with their uh, with their data where the uh, the region of interest in terms of the missing uh, 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 energy is uh, 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 surrounded by the red box. There is a big break in, the, in this box uh, due to the uh, pi zero decays. So my, one of the dominant decays of K plus is pi, pi plus pi zero. And if we would have an ideal rejection of pi zeros, then there would be no break here. Then we would accept all events, but this, this rejection has uh, limits. And so that there is accumulation of background here. So all, all in all, this is again, very consistent with the SARE model. And the, the, the last thing I wanted to, to include here is uh, a recent claim by Bell2 uh, that uh, they can measure the uh, missing energy, the similar uh, uh, thing with the, with, the, um, uh, with the B mesons. This is not as useful as the chaos because remember what I said, K to pi matrix element from the vector current, and it is vector current that contributes here. It can be extracted from the chiral perturbation theory with almost no uncertainties. That's, uh, that's, that's the key, uh, key thing about NA62. For B mesons uh, decays, you would have to have to deal with the QCD form factors and so on. So the difficulty of this measurement is that uh, even though the branching is at the level of 10 to minus 5, the efficiency of the me this measurement is very low because you have to collect uh, like the billions of bees, they, they decay all over the place. So you have to fully reconstruct one bee, bee, bee meson and uh, have then inference about the missing energy decay of the other. So they, they've seen uh, this decay or they say uh, at the, at uh, a few sigma level and uh, consistent with the thermal, but somewhat larger. So it's a little bit premature uh, to 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 say uh, if that is uh, uh, robustly discovered. Now, what's common among all these decays?
it's this uh, thing. So these are the electroweak penguins diagrams. Uh, that is uh, the uh, uh, second order in weak interaction, uh, the uh, um, uh, either box diagram or or the um, uh, the uh, um, the Z exchange and uh, the interestingly gamma exchange would not work for this uh, B decay to mu plus mu minus, but will work for B decay to say semi leptonic mu plus mu minus K K or K K star. Very good. So that uh, the, if we look at this um, um, uh, uh, the result for this uh, for this diagram, it's uh, um, sometimes uh, worth looking under the hood for this. For, of course, this, uh, these are things uh, calculated uh, forty years ago and so on. Uh, but it's uh, it's uh, sometimes uh, uh, good to revisit it. Uh, so in particular, one thing that uh, sh we should all uh, remember is that G Fermi is a really tiny parameter, right? So if you go to the second order in G Fermi, you'd think that, okay, yeah, you get like G Fermi squared times something like M charm squared and so on. But if the top is uh, involved, then you get G Fermi squared times M top squared. And uh, this, this is just as good as uh, order of G Fermi. So this is uh, the, the, the top uh, enhances the result here. Now, if you look at the loop function here, it contains uh, uh, M top squared over MW squared. This is unusual in the following sense. The top is the heaviest particle in this loop. And yet the loop itself is proportional to the mass of the heaviest particle. Okay, this is uh, for those of you who are uh, dealing with electroweak theory and uh, precision uh, electroweak uh, calculations, it should not be surprising because if you look at uh, the, uh, for example, W and the Z mass difference uh, developed at the loop level, it will also have M top squared over M W squared uh, uh, dependence. And uh, well, we, we kind of know that this comes from the uh, longitudinal part of the W propagator or the equivalently diagrams with the charged goldstone in the toothed uh, gauge. All right. Now we're going to try to calculate this and learn something. All right. So um, we are going to uh, try to uh, learn how this uh, uh, y top uh, uh, well, m top squared uh, uh, comes uh, com in the numerator comes about. So uh, basically there are three diagrams with uh, external z, uh, z boson with the zero momentum uh, interacting with the uh, top, uh, top w loop here. Okay. Um, the momenta of all incoming particles are very small compared to the loop momenta that are saturated by the electroweak scale. Uh, the uh, diagrams with the corresponding uh, photon should vanish, right? The, I cannot have a photon at the zero momentum connecting the, say, B quark and the S quark. Why? Because this would uh, contradict something. It would contract, right, it would be a violation of word identity or more, more precisely it would just simply contradict the, the gauge invariance, right? You, you cannot have a photon at the zero momentum because uh, uh, it can connect only particles of the same, of the same mass. Uh, all right, so um, when you try to calculate this thing, you will learn, okay, then there is a white top uh, in, uh, in this uh, Feynman diagrams uh, 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 sitting in each vertex here and the charged propagator here that uh, whose mass I should take to, to be the mass of MW and that's the notion of the, of the, of the toothed gauge. Okay. If you go through the calculation, you will discover that the result is finite by itself. 
And uh, here is the, the, the integrand uh, that uh, you will get after adding all three diagrams. All right. If you stare enough at this, uh, this uh, diagram and you actually uh, take, uh, take the, the, this integral, which is not difficult to take, you'll actually see that uh, you can take m top to be very, very heavy inside this loop integral, and it will cancel uh, y top parameter here so that the result will be uh, proportional to the zero power of xt in the large xt limit in contradiction what I said about here, the, 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 the loop function. Okay. This uh, should... Uh, uh be disturbing as it was disturbing for me when i uh, discovered it doing uh, some some uh, course preparation and um, what's missing uh, from uh, my calculation here is the regularization of the loop diagrams even though they are all together the sum of them is finite the individually they are the divergent and including the uh, the uh, uh, linear divergence that is in fact uh, logarithmic, but the linear divergences are notoriously difficult in field theory, and you should not approach them without regularization. So the the favorite method of uh, all young people is the regularization using the dimensional regularization. It's like you shouldn't forget, right? It's uh, 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 respects all the gauge symmetries immediately, and uh, you you just deal deal with that, and everyone will get the correct answer. But then sometimes uh, it uh, pays off to go uh, old school and do pauli villars regularization. Okay. So now we have the two particles uh, that are entering in this diagram, top quark and uh, the Higgs. On whom can I do a pauli -Villars? Remember, pauli -Villars is that we introduce a particle with a negative uh, norm so that we subtract the propagator with a heavy, heavy mass. Can I do it for the top quark? No. The answer would not be consistent. Remember, half an hour ago, I told you that you cannot have just uh, infinite mass uh, inside the standard model. This would not sit well. But I can do that with the, with the uh, charge Higgs. I can introduce a negative uh, norm state with, uh, that, with a mass MR, and I can take this MR to be very, very large parameter. If I do that, the integral will actually contain uh, mr squared over p squared plus mr squared. When you take this integral, it's going to give you one. So the, uh, this uh, result that we get for this uh, charge the exchange will agree with the nami lim result. Remember the top mass is uh, is proportional to the uh, to the wav times the Yukawa coupling, so we cannot just take it to arbitrary high value. It, like if it would be QED, then no problem. But this uh, here here we have the the charged uh, exchange and the coupling that is uh, uh, specifically related to the mass. What's that? Yes, the char mass, but here we, we would like to regularize it in the U ultraviolet, right? So we have to add a, a particle that is very, very heavy and has a negative norm. I don't think it's consistent for the top quark here uh, because of uh, the, the, we cannot have an electroweak uh, kind of mass for the, for the top quark. Which, but for, for the Higgs, we can do that, and that's uh, that's the result. So the 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 correct result is restored under the the uh, the regularization, and the dominant piece comes from the regulator. This is uh, also uh, known as the anomaly. So this uh, this calculation has an anomaly inside. Yes. Yes, Higgs too. Um, 
the here here this is the charged higgs so so that uh, that over here this uh, this uh, can be absolutely um uh, taken to to uh, to the um uh, so the, we have uh, uh, in this in this diagram we have one particle that has a mass of mw right and another one is the Higgs mass that that is that is very heavy. So the the Pauli velars Pauli velars mass. All right, and that is uh, that is consistent with all gauge symmetry. All right, so this uh, this uh, restores uh, restores the result, and uh, I tried to illustrate you that importance of regularization that uh, I found firsthand because I was uh, confused at this point for for several days, some years ago. All right, so um, we should mention some problems in uh, work flavor physics. Uh, so. Uh, precision UDSC quadrant of uh, CKM shows some tension with unitarity. Uh, rates for flavor changing semi leptonic decays of these uh, two charged leptons show some, uh, some uh, um, deficit compared to theoretical estimates. Angular distributions are sometimes of uh, K star particle that decays to two more particles and uh, mu plus mu minus uh, show, show some, some deviation from this thermodynamic prediction. And, um, but this is uh, all uh, kind of, um, um, well, it's, uh, it's, it's still in progress, I should say. Uh, then uh, this is known as uh, B anomalies. As uh, one of my colleagues said, I don't remember living through days without any B anomalies. It's sort of more senior than myself. Uh, so uh, there are the sort of uh, some discrepancies in determination of VCB. And there is uh, what, what I find uh, somewhat troubling for myself is that there is a, a reopening of the debate what is the true origin of the delta i one half rule in uh, kaon physics and uh, in uh, in uh, 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 non leptonic baryon decays so this is uh, i know that uh, probably uh, not uh, concerning young people much but if you open the particle data group book and you look at the k plus decays to pi plus pi minus, a k-long, uh, uh, sorry, a k-short decays to pi plus pi minus. But they have vastly different uh, lifetimes, and that is the reflection of the delta i one-half rule. So this is uh, this is a uh, long time uh, believed to be solved by uh, QCD penguins, and uh, now being challenged by the lattice QCD, but I don't, haven't seen any sort of convincing uh, explanations uh, from the lattice community. And it's only claimed for cairns. And where, whereas in baryon physics, it uh, holds even better than uh, this, this rule. So there is some, something to, to understand still uh, within the problems that existed from 1960s. Yes. I is the isospin, right? So they, there is two... two uh, uh, two uh, channels, isospin one half, isospin three half, and it's known that isospin one half dominates the other, the other channel by a factor of 20 to 40. So that uh, that is not a, a factor of two or three. So this is this is an actual thing observed with all decays, right? So this is uh, this is the the still still an important part of the flavor system. Here is uh, just an illustration how the the uh, uh, CKM unitarity is being put together, and there is some tension between this uh, this uh, intersection here and the the uh, the unitarity line. Here's the review you can look at. One of the anomalies that was dominating uh, the field uh, has gone away, and that is uh, uh, when you compare. The uh, electron and the muon semi-leptonic decay ratios of the B mesons. Uh, for a long time, it was showing the results uh, here around 0 0.7, 0 0.6, uh, 
that is, uh, was the, uh, the sort of a jewel in the B physics anomaly basket because uh, uh, they should be the same or so the same within errors. Uh, and uh, uh, the difficulty here was the, the correct identification of uh, electrons and positrons in, uh, in the decays of the B mesons because in the messy environment of the LEC, Remember yesterday's lecture, the, the, the electrons radiate and uh, apparently the some hadronic backgrounds were misinterpreted as extra electrons and that uh, that was uh, corrected. So now, now all the decays are, are consistent with when. So this is an example of, uh, of, uh, of uh, an anomaly that went away under more scrutiny. All right, so we are abandoning uh, uh, cool, uh, so I should uh, probably have another 15 minutes or so. Uh, all right. Uh, we started a bit late. So now we are abandoning the, uh, the, the quark flavor and let's discuss the... the um, Uh, I'm not sure if uh, this is related to the thing, uh, the, the discussion you started from the question in the sense that you are talking. So I don't know if you heard. Where B, B sub S, the total rate, uh, you, you mean? Yeah, I can show it. Uh, but it's actually defined now as the term. It's uh, B sub S. Yeah, we probably should talk because I, I don't uh, uh, see a problem here with BS to uh, B sub S to mu mu because you can see that uh, the prediction of the stern model is within uh, within at least within two sigma of the of the experimental result and this is uh, now a consistent picture between uh, CMS and LHCb that have. Uh, uh, very good measurements. Uh, there, there is maybe more going on, and uh, I'm not 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 aware of uh, that. Is quite possible. Yes. Um, very well. So we we leave quarks and we get to the uh, uh, implications of neutrino oscillations and its uh, discovery. So uh, here is a very uh, fuzzy. Outlook, I have a picture of a uh, uh, snow experiment uh, that measured uh, the uh, neutral currents uh, interactions of the neutrinos coming from the sun and seeing no deficit in the neutral currents where all the three flavors interact the same way with the deuterium creating the neutrons. And uh, that is uh, was the resolution of the long time uh, the the solar anomaly that was uh, almost immediately further supported uh, by Kamland experiment. The discovery of the so-called atmospheric neutrino oscillations by uh, um, uh, the uh, super Kamiakande collaboration has since become a big business of uh, measuring the neutrino oscillation in the neutrino beam environment where you produce the neutrino beam. And over here, you can see now which experiment is that. Minos, I believe, uh, or, uh, the, the, or, or maybe it's T2K, sorry. Uh, the, this is uh, here, the, the uh, uh, new mu disappearance uh, with uh, the, uh, if you uh, design your experiment with the correct uh, energy 
and the correct baseline, you can uh, have a factor of 10 suppression of the expected signal compared compared to to what you would predict without oscillations. So there is no absolutely no doubts that there is a neutrino oscillations with the two mass parameters and three mixing angles that is measured. And the question is how to accommodate this inside the standard model. Okay. All right, inside the standard model, the way I define it, there is uh, no room other than adding high dimensional operators. And then we can call it the, the effective operator within the standard model, or this is um, uh, uh, beyond standard model physics. One way or another, it requires extra degrees of freedom beyond what, what I have uh, put uh, uh, in at the very beginning. <coughs> One possibility is that there is indeed a, a right-handed uh, fermion uh, the, that is fully singlet that is added to the star model and, for example, forms a, 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 a Dirac mass for the neutrinos. Or there is a possibility of the so-called CISO when the heavy neutrino uh, uh, mediates uh, um, uh, the interaction between these two composite uh, fermions, uh, new age, uh, and that uh, gives a Majorana mass to the to the um, uh, to the neutrino. Like if we return back to this uh, L phi uh, business, where this is a left-handed uh, 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 electron and neutrino doublet and uh, contracted with the Higgs boson, you would see that because uh, this contraction goes via this epsilon, as we discussed. Uh, there is a minus sign here, but that's not important. The neutrino. Uh, left-handed field is getting uh, multiplied by the Higgs web. Okay, so what is this? This is uh, uh, dimension uh, five half uh, standard model singlet fermion. If you think of this whole whole thing as as one fermion. All right. So then, uh, if we have this uh, one fermion, we can uh, we can. Uh, uh, join these two, two, two guys together. And uh, uh, just uh, counting the dimensions, this is dimension five. And therefore, we will have uh, effective interaction where weighted here by one over lambda. And this is a dimension five operator, Weinberg operator giving, uh, giving the um, uh, neutrinos and Majorana mass. Um, it is the only type of the dimension five operator that you can write down inside the standard model. And interestingly, it will give you a, a mass of the neutrino proportional to the Higgs uh, wave squared divided by lambda. Uh, this uh, effective operator has uh, a UV completion. The most obvious one is in terms of the right-handed neutrino where you have uh, basically uh, some Yukawa interaction uh, joining the, uh, the, the file with, uh, with N, and N has a Majorana mass here. Uh, that is, uh, uh, the, this, this state is heavy. You can integrate it out and uh, obtain two masses. One, one is the light neutrino mass, and the other one is uh, as, uh, the same as MN that is uh, staying heavy. This is a framework called uh, the CISO mechanism. Now, the, there is a sort of, uh, the, you can think of it as the normal neutrino having uh, a little bit of mixing with, uh, with the right-handed neutrino. Angle theta here has nothing to do with the angles we discover in the, in the neutrino oscillation. This is a, a very small parameter here indeed, a mixing between a heavy neutrino state and the light neutrinos. And uh, this is proportional to the square root of the mass ratio between uh, observed uh, uh, and, and mu, which is on the scale of uh, a uh, fraction of electron volt and MN, and MN can be as high as uh, as the 10 to the 15 GeV, but can be uh, at the same time uh, a lot lighter. All right, uh, so one thing that I wanted to uh, perhaps uh, uh, discuss with you is uh, the distinction between the Dirac uh, mass term and the uh, Majorana mass term. So, uh, 
this was not invented for neutrinos. This uh, Torre Marana uh, realized uh, at some point, I guess in 1930s, that uh, the description of Dirac is perhaps excessive for the neutrons. It was the wrong idea because uh, for neutrons, it's still a uh, Dirac has a, has a com uh, com uh, uh, correct interpretation. But uh, let's uh, let's let's just discuss this a little bit. So Dirac mass term uh, for for the for the electron, you can write as psi bar psi, or I was writing it as psi left uh, uh, bar psi right plus plus reverse. And in terms of the uh, uh, psi, we know that this is a uh, Dirac for spinner and contains uh, 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 by spinner, uh, sorry, a spinner phi and chi, uh, phi one, phi two, chi one, chi two. This, if I rewrite this in terms of uh, phi and chi, I get I get this. This is uh, fully invariant under the rotations and also invariant under the, the of course, the Lorentz transformation. Otherwise, we would not be able to put it in the Lagrange. And uh, additionally, this uh, mass term is invariant under the rephasing. If we take uh, the psi to multiply it by, by a phase, uh, psi bar psi remains invariant. And that means that we can gauge the psi, uh, for example, and make it a charged particle. Okay, that's what it is for electrons. Now, the Majorana picture is that Actually, let's let's just leave with a, uh, instead of a four spinner, just a regular spinner. I will write a, a spin one half particle that is contains phi one phi two. This is like regular spinner, and uh, let me write. Uh, let me take uh, phi i phi j times epsilon i j. Uh, they're the contracted the same way as we were contracting as u two indices, right? So this way I will write phi one phi two minus phi two phi one. Uh, I silly question: Why is it not zero? The affirmance the anti-commuting, right? So then never mind the minus sign. If you re replace them, uh, the the reverse order it doesn't cancel. You can show, and uh, unfortunately I have no time for doing this, that this is indeed invariant on the. It better be invariant under the uh, rotations and Lorentz boosts. Uh, okay, so we 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 kind of already assume that this is invariant because I said so for as you to a weak a weak gauge, right? But this is also true for the for the rotations and the boosts here. And uh, this, uh, however, is not uh, 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 rephasing invariant, right? If I multiply the this uh, 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 phi by uh, uh, exponent of I alpha phi, well, the Majorana mass term uh, will pick up uh, the exponent of I two alpha, right, uh, phase. So you cannot describe a charged particle. And uh, in terms of the diagram, it would correspond to a changing of fermion number by two units. So I can have a Two arrows uh, meeting at at the point, or two arrows uh, uh, emanating from the same point, something that you would never write for an electron. Um, so, if we have uh, uh, this this picture, we have uh, uh, let's call it a minimal flavor kind of uh, description for the neutrinos when we have. Uh, just uh, just perhaps a dimension five operator or Dirac mass, and uh, there is no extra parameters, and uh, uh, the mixing between the singlet states and the active states are are uh, uh, set uh, th uh, through through these uh, relations over here. So in that picture, we have the suppression of the uh, uh, of the lepton flavor violation because. Uh, the same type of diagrams where, remember, uh, for example, muon uh, uh, transforms to an electron, we will have the very similar subtraction of the two, uh, two uh, propagators now with the neutrinos rather than the quarks. So if before we had uh, something, a mass of the charm squared minus mass of the up quark squared, 
which was uh, same as the mass of the charm uh, quark squared and this one point something GV squared. Now we will get uh, sub EV uh, squared parameters and all these diagrams in the minimal framework will be uh, much suppressed. You can get depressed at this point, but you can also say, okay, this is uh, my chance to discover or try to discover beyond standard model physics, because if I see something in the mu to E gamma decay, for example, or in the mu E conversion, this would correspond to, uh, to uh, uh, a genuine uh, physics not related to active uh, neutrino masses per se. All right. Where the suppression is less, uh, uh, remember that this, uh, I said we can uh, have the, the arrows uh, emanating from this cross, which, which is a Majorana mass uh, here. Uh, where the suppression is less is uh, if we take uh, W uh, minus W minus and we join them to, to create E plus E minus. This, of course, uh, not a very practical proposition if you actually think of colliding W minus W minus, right? But we can uh, make a sort of a clever trick here. I would uh, put a neutron here uh, and an outgoing proton, and I will put a neutron here and an outgoing proton. This also looks uh, a, little, a little bit silly. Am I going to collide two neutrons or not? Okay. I'm going to put this all into a xenon-136 nucleus, which is famously can decay to barium-136 with uh, producing normally two neutrinos and uh, two electrons. But if there is a Majorana mass, you can produce just uh, two electrons, and this is uh, uh, neutrino less, double beta decay, and the suppression here is going to be linear in the or the amplitude is going to be proportional to the mass of the neutrino divided by the energy uh, momentum scale of this propagator, which uh, I would uh, uh, just dare to say is proportional to 100 MeV, the actual uh, momentum exchange size of the, of the nucleons. Uh, so this is a small parameter but it's not hopeless, okay? So this, uh, this, is, uh, this is a mass of, uh, okay, maybe sub AV over, over, over 100 MeV, but you gain a little bit by uh, reducing the number of particles in the final state. So there is a, a big business of uh, looking for it with uh, uh, a very robust uh, framework of the uh, uh, neutrinoless uh, uh, double beta decays. All right, so I'm uh, uh, running out of uh, time. Do we want to break now? And then, uh, and then I finish this lecture one. I'm a little bit uh, behind, but um, okay. So let's uh, let's have a let's have a break and I'll finish. What's that? Uh, How long do I have after the break? So, so do I... <laughs> I've been talking about maybe uh, we started probably ten minutes after, yeah. right? So I talk, was talking hour, hour twenty. So can I? Yeah, ten minutes. So ten minutes to eleven. That's good.